let's look at some of the defining properties of waves. I have these wood blocks here to create a barrier. I'm going to take the straight edge and send the waves at the barrier. First, I'll send the waves directly at the barrier. And what do you see happen? Right, you see they're bouncing off. This is known as reflection, bouncing off a boundary. If I send the waves directly at the barrier, they come directly back at me. If I send them at a shallow angle, they reflect off at a shallow angle. I send them at a large angle, they reflect off at a large angle. This is known as the law of reflection. But here, here's the incident waves coming in, here are the reflected waves coming out, and you're seeing the ripples bouncing off. All waves exhibit reflection. Let's look at a different property here, known as diffraction. I've oriented the barriers this way. I'm going to send the waves in over here. Look what happens on this side. Isn't that interesting? The wood blocks should block the wave, and yet you can see some of the waves getting here as if it's bending around the corner. And that's what diffraction is, bending around an obstacle and spreading out. Objects can't do this, but waves can because they're pure energy. When the wave gets to the corner here, the energy bends around and spreads out. And so you can see they're coming in as plane waves. On the other side, they have partial circles to their shape. Watch what happens when I create an opening. So here's the opening between the wood blocks. I send plane waves in, and now you can see the full circular wave fronts coming out. What's really happening is that the waves are bending around both corners. Now here I've got plane waves coming in, I've got circular wave fronts coming out. What do you think would happen if I send circular wave fronts in? Yeah, still circular wave fronts coming out. There's nothing that's going to make them flatten out into a straight line. They're always going to bend around the corners forming those circular wave fronts. Now watch what happens when I increase the size of the opening. It's still creating circular wave fronts, but down the middle, it's not quite as rounded, it's sort of flattened out. Let's make it really wide. Here we make it very, very wide. Down the middle, it almost looks like it doesn't diffract at all. It's very, very flat, just like they came in. Only near this corner and this corner, can you actually see the bending around the corner, can you actually see the diffraction. So you see, if the opening is very large, it seems like it doesn't diffract at all. To really be able to see the diffraction, you need the size of the opening to be relatively small. Now watch what happens if I stand one of these blocks up to create two openings. So I've got one opening here and one opening here. Now we have the wave diffracting through both openings, creating circular wave fronts from both openings, and those patterns overlap each other. In fact, it's the exact same thing as if I just took my two fingers and tapped in those openings. Let's now look at refraction. For this one, I'm going to put these glass plates and make sure the water covers them up. I'm going to send waves this way. I want you to see what happens when the waves go over the glass plates. What differences do you see in the waves? This one's a little bit harder to see. But what I've changed here is the depth of the water. I've changed something about the medium. And what does the medium control about a wave? It controls the speed. So if you look really carefully, you might be able to see the speed of the wave is different in the deep part of the water versus the shallow part of the water as it goes over the glass plates. You might also be able to see the direction changes a little bit, or the angle that the wave is moving in. Harder to see is that the spacing between the waves, the wavelength changes as well. But all those things change upon refraction. It's a change in speed, direction, and wavelength when the medium changes.